So what are the causes of a perplexing power plunge in your engine? A car will produce a set amount of power when it first comes out of the factory. But as time goes on, that power figure just goes down and down and down. So you may have been driving along in the countryside with the wind in your hair. That's not something I'm able to experience anymore. But those of you that have hair and enjoy this experience, that's something I'm very envious of. But we enjoy our cars. We like driving. The joy and pleasure that we get from a, a nicely performing engine is certainly up there for most of us. So when that power starts to decline, it becomes a bit of a concern and it's often a sign of looming bills and problems. But in this video, we're just going to look at some of the things that are happening inside the engine that will result in that gradual power loss over time. And knowing what these problems are or these problem areas are can actually help us to develop strategies to avoid those problems from escalating or even affecting us in the long run. So most of these problems are attributable to normal wear and tear on the engine. You've got a series of metal components constantly rubbing against each other. And eventually that metal is going to degrade. The tolerances and clearances are going to be expanding and nowhere near what the manufacturer originally designed and set them to be. So at the top of the engine in the head, you've got the valve train, the valves that open and close and allow the gases into the engine and out of the engine again after the combustion process. So if these have become warm, they're not sitting as they were originally, they're going to result in leakage. Now, in a combustion engine, compression is important. You are compressing the air and fuel charge or compressing the air charge. And the better that compression is, the more power you will make. So if some of that compression is leaking away through the valves, maybe the camshaft itself has become worn and you're not getting as much lift on those valves. So they're not opening as much as they were. The car is just not going to be breathing effectively. It's like choking the engine engine so it is going to be down on power. So that's something that happens over a period of time and you may even notice a rattling noise in the top of the engine and the engine may even start to misfire or judder when this valve clearance problem becomes so extreme that the engine computer can no longer compensate for those differences. So again worn piston rings so the piston itself has a series of rings around it that form a nice seal up against the edge of the cylinder wall. So if those piston rings have started to wear down, some of those compressed gases are going to be flowing past those rings into the crankcase where they're going to cause all sorts of other problems and issues. But again, your compression is going to be down due to that wear and tear. And on the exhaust stroke, as the explosion happens in the engine, some of that explosion is just going to go past those piston rings. So it's not going to be pushing the piston down as effectively as it otherwise would. So you're going to be down on power as a result of that. So thankfully, piston ring replacement is relatively straightforward. It requires disassembly of the engine, but they're not usually very expensive parts. And while you've got the engine open, you've got a chance to get in there and maybe upgrade some of the other components and actually give the engine a proper overhaul. So another area outside of the wear and tear category is really deposits that start building up. So the intake valves and the valves valve seats themselves tend to get coked up with carbon deposits. So the more carbon you've got in there, the narrower the channel the less air is going to flow through into the engine. So that's going to reduce efficiency. And carbon buildup in most engines happens very slowly over a period of time. And when they introduced direct injection engines, the carbon buildup problem was becoming a major headache to most car owners. Although some manufacturers have got methods and systems in place to mitigate those issues from propping up. But the carbon buildup on the valves can also prevent those valves from closing properly. The trouble with carbon is it doesn't stay solid Solid, it can chip away and flake away. So the valve itself may not be giving you as much lift just because it's on a bed of carbon. But every now and then that carbon itself gets chipped away. So you start to have a leak through that area around the valve where the carbon has actually coated itself. So we're talking there about more extreme cases of carbon buildup. So carbon deposits on the piston itself, on the crown of the piston and on the cylinder walls can also lead to a loss of power. Now, what carbon tends to do is it gets very hot, it starts to glow. And that can sometimes cause the fuel mixture in the engine to ignite prematurely. So that can result in inefficient burning of the engine. The knock sensor may well back off the fueling. And effectively, you'll be down 
down on power just because of that problem that's being caused by the carbon inside the engine. So it's always recommended to use a good quality fuel with the correct amount of detergents in to resist that carbon buildup inside the engine. And a lot of people swear by these cleaners that you add to the fuel system. So please let me know in the comments what you think of fuel system cleaners and carbon cleaner fluids that you add to your fuel tank, whether it's something you bother with and if you've got any brands that you particularly recommend or endorse. So the actual throttle body itself and the intake, they eventually get clogged up as well. So that restricts the airflow. The airflow sensor in some intakes is actually prone to fouling. So if your engine is getting incorrect readings of the amount of air that's going into it, it's going to make incorrect calculations with regard to fuel and ignition timing. And that's going to result in a loss of power over time. Again, something that gradually increases as time goes on. So within the exhaust, there's a, a fact of living in this modern world where we're all worried about the environment. We've got catalysts, DPF, you've got a diesel engine, a modern diesel engine. And those filters do degrade over time. They get clogged up. The soot that the engine is spitting out will eventually collect in these and you'll start to have a restriction. So the exhaust gases will not be flowing as efficiently, as fast as you would otherwise want. And that can have an impact on the scavenging effect. The cylinders aren't properly emptying on the exhaust stroke. So you're not getting as much clean air into the cylinder for the next charge. And that's going to mean that you are effectively down on power. You've reduced the efficiency of the engine. The various sensors in the engine can also be a problem. We've mentioned the the MAF, the mass airflow sensor that you get on the intake, but also the O2 sensor or the lambda sensor in the exhaust. As that starts to degrade over time and get sooted up and fouled up, it then starts sending wrong readings back to the ECU, which upsets the calculations. And usually it results in the engine backing off on the fuel, making less power effectively just to keep itself within the manufacturer's chosen parameters for operating. The fuel injectors play a critical role in delivering the fuel. So whether you've got port injectors or direct injection, whether it's gasoline, petrol, or a diesel powered car, the injectors do a big job. And the way the fuel is sprayed, the mist that you get actually aids the way that the fuel burns and mixes with the air charge as it goes into the engine. So over time, these injectors do become clogged up. They've been carrying fuel all the time. As you shut the engine off and it cools down and warms up, there are opportunities for the little deposits of fuel on the injectors to start to become hard and baked in. And that can adversely affect the way that the injectors spray the fuel into the engine. So if the spray pattern is not correct, the engine will probably detect that it's running rich, there's too much fuel because it's not burning it all. So it'll back off on fuel and that'll back off on the power that you're making. So always get the injectors checked as a matter of routine, really. As they get older, they will degenerate and degrade over time. That will be a major factor in losing power on your engine over time. You've got to also bear in mind that the fuel pump that delivers the fuel to the injectors will also be wearing over time. There's components inside the pump that is constantly rotating, creating that pressure. And modern fuel systems operate at very, very high pressures. So that fuel pump is doing a lot of work. And whenever you make someone do a lot of work over their life, they get old, they wear out, their performance starts to decline. That's certainly something that I've experienced. So you've got to look at the fuel system as a whole. Even the hoses that carry the fuel from the fuel tank to the front of the engine can degrade over time and you can start getting leaks or pressure loss within the fuel system. And with the injectors in these modern direct injection engines, if you've got a slightly leaky injector, that'll effectively mean that all of the other injectors that are connected to that fuel rail, that high pressure fuel rail, will also degrade in performance because that pressure is being lost through that leaky injector. So general other causes of loss of compression in the engine can be the cylinders themselves. If they become scored, or scratched. That's an area for that compression to be lost into the crankcase of the engine. So that is certainly an area that needs to be addressed and looked at in those older engines. You tend to get these problems happening when you start driving an engine very, very hard on a cold engine. You've got to bear in mind that the components within the engine are made of metal and they will expand and contract as they heat and cool. So manufacturers have generally designed engines to operate effectively when they're warm. The clearances are generally much higher and much wider 
colder when the engine is cold, the pistons actually change shape slightly as they warm up and the piston rings are able really to really bed into the cylinder wall. So if you drive an engine hard when it's cold before that's happened, you've got excessive vibration, which will dramatically increase the wear and tear on the engine. Plus that cold engine, the oil hasn't had time to reach its correct viscosity. So it's not lubricating as well. They do say that most engine wear occurs within that warm up cycle. And that's certainly true. So those short journeys where you're only using the car on that cold engine are really detrimental to the long term life of the engine. The gasket itself, if that started to leak, that's going to be an area where you start losing compression inside the engine. You tend to notice this mayonnaise forming within the oil. That's often the first sign that you get, as well as the white smoke that you get out of the exhaust. But there are things to look out for that could indicate that there's maybe a problem with the head gasket. The head itself can also warp. We've also known heads to crack. And again, that will result in that leak of pressure from within the engine. So you'll be down on power. Then you've got the manifold the exhaust manifold, the intake manifold, if they are starting to leak, you're starting to lose some of the pressure. So maybe the air is not flowing into the engine. If you've got a turbocharger, you might be losing some of that boost through that leak. If the exhaust system is leaking, you're losing some of that scavenging effect and you've probably created extra turbulence within the exhaust as some of the gases are escaping through the crack or through the leak in the exhaust itself. So that's going to be detrimental to the engine's performance. A common thing that happens is the intake hoses on the turbocharged engine can start to split or leak and lose boost pressure. Now that tends to happen at higher RPMs when there's a lot more boost pressure. So they may be able to hold in the boost pressure at those lower levels. But as soon as you reach the threshold of that weakness, that poor link or that slight split or crack, it opens up and the pressure just eases out. So that can result in a loss of power on your engine. A lot of the other things that are going to affect the power output of the engine over time is down to us, the owner of the car and the maintenance. So the air filter itself, if that that's allowed to get dirty, the engine is going to struggle to suck in fresh air. It'd be like breathing through a face mask that had just been caked in mud effectively. A lot of hard work has to go into getting that air to go in. But changing that filter regularly is certainly recommended. Most manufacturers have a schedule that requires it to be changed every 12 months or every 24,000 miles. So it depends on the engine, the size of the filter and how it's been configured. But don't let the air filter clog up because that's going to result in a loss of power. If you've got a gasoline or a spark ignition engine or a petrol engine, these spark plugs play a critical role in starting the burn inside the engine. And spark plugs will degrade over time. They get sooted up. They, they get carbon building up on the electrode tip. So the spark may not work as effectively as the manufacturer designed. You may have a weak spark. You may have an intermittent spark. They can all result in substantial losses of power for such a, a simple, cheap part. It's certainly worth just keeping on top of the maintenance, just making sure that those spark plugs are always changed at the correct intervals and that you use the correct temperature of spark plug. So I've done a video recently on spark plugs just to help you to understand the complexities if it's something you're not that familiar with. And most of the things that we've listed in this video are down to maintenance wear and tear problems, wear and tear issues. And the one thing that's going to protect your engine from wear and tear is oil. So changing the oil frequently, using the correct grade of oil. We've had so many questions about oil, how often you should change it, what a good oil grade is, what the differences are between the different specs of oil. So we've done videos that go into a lot of depth in the subject of engine oil, but it really is the lifeblood of your oil. So I would urge everyone watching this video, if you want to keep your engine performing at its best and not suffer from that perplexing power plunge, you get your oil changed and change it regularly and always use a good quality oil. So let me know what your habits are in regard to maintaining your car. I hope you found this video useful. Please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I've lined this video up for you that should help you to understand a little bit more about the importance of maintaining your car and keeping it in good condition. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.